welcome to Coffee, Eggs and Inspiration. It's a weekly YouTube video and uh, podcast that goes out over SoundCloud. Uh, and each week I get to sit down with somebody inspiring uh, to listen to them tell their story. And this week is no different. I'm joined by Quasi Court. Quasi is a, uh, a, an up and coming uh, British rapper uh, who's got an absolutely inspiring and brilliant story. So welcome Quasi. Welcome, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so tell me where it all began. You grew up, uh, you're a London, London boy. You grew, yeah. up, you grew up where? Yeah, so I grew up in um, South London, a uh, place called Mitcham, um, close to Croydon as well. Uh, yeah, just a typical sort of South London story. Uh, growing up in the early 2000s, um, yeah. Making me feel old, the early 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> and what was that like? You, you went, to, went to school down there? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to uh, Castle and Boy Sports College. Yep. Um, went to school down there. Uh, yeah, learned all my lessons in South London. Uh, developed my skill for poetry and uh, spent a lot of time in the streets and just kind of... Uh, yeah, just taking it all in. It was my little ecosystem, my little world or vortex, as my friend says. It just was everything I ever knew. Wow. You know, South London was my... What you know as the world is, is, is what you know as the world. So whatever you see, you know, my whole experience on the planet was based on that place in South London. So that became my world, Amazing. essentially, the world I knew. Amazing. And, and you mentioned uh, poetry. You know, that's not a... Is that a normal thing to get into in, uh, in, in, in Mitchell? It's so Croydon? funny, yeah. It's so funny because the first time I actually started uh, uh, really sort of writing down my poetry was a girl called uh, Clarice. Clarice. <laughs> a girl called Clarice from uh, South East London. I need to fight if you see this Clarice. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Clarice. <laughs> anyway, uh, she had a, uh, she was in, I think we were in year eight and um, she had a, uh, a, poet, a poetry sort of task she had to do for school and uh, we found each other through Bebo or MySpace, one of the early social media platforms. Um, and uh, she said it to me on the, we had a five day pass on T-Mobile where you could uh, spend I think five pounds or 10 pounds and you'd get to do free texts and free calls. So we used that and uh, she used to speak to me and uh, one of the days she said her poem uh, when we were in year eight. Um, obviously, I, I used to rap before that in year nine, just as a way of being or whatever. It was just something we did. And anyway, she did it, and I was so impressed. Uh, after I hanged up that phone call that day, I prepared. Uh, so she spoke her poem to you? Or? Yeah, she spoke her poem okay. to me over the phone. Um, and uh, I wanted to return, almost like a reply to that poem. I didn't get to actually do that in year eight, but I wrote the poem, and it was so... I put so much of my emotion into it. I started saying them to my friends, and. You know, I started to, to love this, this thing of poetry, writing down my words and allowing them to rhyme. Inspired by Clarice, I mean, before that, obviously, uh, my first performance was nine years old. In nine years old? In first school, yeah. Me and my friend, uh, uh, Fritz, we uh, performed at first, first at nine years old. And one of the things of like... Was that spoken word or was that rap That was already? a performance of uh, More Fire Crew song. Okay. Um, we performed, performed the song. He just suggested that we perform it. Um, I know my inspiration of music comes from my mum's love for music. Um, what sort of music did she listen to? Luther Vandross, uh, Stevie Wonder, a lot of 80s, uh, Bobby Brown, a lot of 80s funk soul music. Right. Because she spent a lot of time growing up in Florida and Jamaica. Okay. Um, so th th that was the soundtrack to her life, you know. If I play a Luther Vandross, Luther Vandross record, I could see her going back yeah. into that space in Florida. Remembering that time. Yeah, remembering that time. So. Uh, religiously she'd play music um, that's probably why I learned you know the BPM beats per minute right as a child simply because I just heard it yeah constantly it was just an, uh, it, it's how a lot of the, the, the black community uh, communicate integrate uh, share time with each other music's a big part and center part of, of that culture right. I think it ultimately comes from uh, I guess in, in slavery they used to use music as a way to, uh, as a the form of therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, they'd meet up together and, and sing songs and, and a way to communicate. So I think that spirit carries on through to the generations before me and then down to the generations where, you know, they're playing CDs yeah. and then you have young me's running around listening, maybe not paying attention but hearing it. Yeah. So by the time I'm nine, I, I can rap because I've just 
you know, have a makeup. Absorbed. Of, it, yeah, yeah, I've absorbed it. That, that's fundamentally what it comes down to. If you yeah. raise a kid, I think just listening to music every single day, you know, then eventually it's I think a great beginning. Yeah. yeah, it's a great beginning. So did Clarice ever hear the the no, poetry? She hasn't. You know, uh, she's from Jamaica and Malta. Really? So there is specifics. Yeah, if you ever. <laughs> so can you see remember this. any lines from it? I can't remember any lines from. Uh, Okay. You need to make this commitment now that you get back to Kareli. Uh, it is. It's one that. of those. <laughs> it's actually one of those stories where it's like, yeah, I, I wanted to return that that poetry back to her. Um, but anyway, from that point on, first performance at nine, then I kind of stopped. Yeah. And then after Clarice did that, I ended up recording my first record at fourteen, um, and then we sent it around schools. Called Coming Up Fast with Fritz. We recorded it at my friend Fraser's house. And this was rap? Rap, yeah. I don't know how we knew how to, as I said, I think it was probably just listening to a lot of people. Can you remember it? I just said, coming up fast, coming up quickly, when I clash us will slew you swiftly. That was like the chorus. Nice. Yeah, coming up fast, coming up quickly. So it was just about, at that time, coming up fast. We're taking over, we're in year eight or nine. And we just, but people, people loved it, you know. Rapping, also on that part, rapping was, uh, it was a part of our culture. It was the way that we communicated with each other yeah. um, in a boys' school that we went to, and just a part of our community. It was just always our way of uh, integrating and, and sharing our stories without really sharing our our stories. You know. Not tell me, tell me about it. so sharing your stories without really sharing your stories. Can we yeah, go? like having having open dialogue with family and friends isn't an innate habit open dialogue meaning like an honest viewpoint of what we're actually going through because a lot of the time it's not what we want to really speak about we don't want to deal with those realities so through rap it's kind of a cool way to or a comfortable way of telling your story right without having to tell your story so it's a directly safe, in words. safe way to yeah because in poetry express. people yeah. people not only are listening to the words but they're also going into an emotional state which makes it easier for you to communicate the message as opposed to the talking part. It's like, I'm, all I'm hearing are your words. Right. And you just take, you digest the information differently. It's almost like how, you know, someone says, I love you in a record as opposed to saying it in, in words. It's, it's, it's the same words, but it's a different receiving of it, in it? Right. So at the time I didn't know that, but in looking back at it now, it was a way to exercise who you were. It was a way to communicate your, your experience. Uh, without having to actually do it directly, right? Um, so, so this obviously became part of your uh, your being uh, at school. Uh, what happened after school? Um, after school, um, sixth form, I went to Gravesend sixth form. Yeah. Um, I was always in, uh, I always wanted to get good grades. So I think I got like ten GCSEs, maybe three or four A's. Wow. Uh, my dad was pretty strict. Uh, you obviously that. studied hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I studied hard towards the end. Yeah, I've always had a sense of self in wanting to uh, achieve and having the results of achievement. So anyway, in that, I had an Asian friend called Hitaf and he, he was speaking about the school for Grave Me. I didn't have a clue because I'd just be in the ends rapping and I didn't really care. Those metrics didn't matter to me, like schools and whatever, you know what I mean? As far as I was concerned, it's just about the ends and rapping and whatever. So anyway, I went to the school Grave Me. It may not be anything for Grave Me students, but coming from where I came from, going into the Grave Me uh, sort of world, it became um, a whole different world for me to be inspired by and exposed to different ideas. People's parents had different incomes, people were doing different things on the weekends, the habits were different, the culture was different. Um, and uh, that's the first time they exposed, uh, you know, some students in media class were playing Kings of Leon, uh, Use Somebody, Sets on Fire, and also met some students that introduced me to uh, Pink Floyd. Um, and this is when I started to, I liked it. It was like the first time I heard that type of rock. Pink Floyd. Yeah. Orchestral rock, I think they call it. Yeah. yeah. And I, I liked it. I liked, I liked the way it sounded. It was different. It was a different energy, a different BPM I was used to, a different attitude. But I could relate to the uh, concepts um, of Kurt Cobain or the concepts of Pink Floyd. I could relate to that feeling of uh, whatever feeling they were perpetuating it was similar to hip hop, but just told in a different way and over different instruments. Right. Um, and that inspired me to integrate. And that, at that point, I, I decided, ah, oh, how would it sound to sort of integrate my world and that world? 
so terms you, of Sonic Youth. You, you obviously had a lot of inspiration there. You started with Luther, Van, Luther Vandross, from yeah. your, your mum, uh, Pink Floyd, you've talked about Kings of Leon and the spoken word in, in, a, in a poetic form. So there's a lot of stuff already coming together, right? And yeah. You, so what's your thing? What, what, what style? What style do you call your own now? Uh, now I would just I would say it's uh, m uh, sort of contemporary rock and rap. Rock and rap. Yeah, rock and rap music. Um, I'm British. I was born in London, um, so being a part of the South London community, which I think has the most amount of like African and Caribbean people, we obviously a lot of us are ingrained into a lot of the music that our communities would play. Um, so that was where a lot of the obviously reggae and, and, and afro beats now but a lot of the soul music i think my mum and, and my my father uh, they used to dance to a lot of american soul music plus my mum actually grew up uh, in florida where my grandparents still have a house there okay. and a lot of my family is, is is internationally there so that's heavy in in the inspiration in my household grime and hip-hop are just like that's just like a passport. Right. Like it's just the basics of like us being us. Right. Um, it's the first time we saw people like us that look like us with our accent on TV, yeah. rapping about things and areas that we lived as opposed to saw from a distance. Right. That's why rhyme rhyme always had that uh, connection to our life because it's literally people from our exact world. Right. Um, so what inspires you when you when you think about a lyric? Um, you know, I know life's not always been easy for you. Mm -hmm. what, what inspires you? Is it a form of uh, narrative telling your story, or, or is it some sort of fantasy that you you enter into? Is it somewhere in between? That's a good question. What inspires me? Me making music. What inspires me to make music? I think is maybe a form of, I don't know if there's it's, it's inspiration, it's just a form of, uh, it's just something I've always done as a way of therapy maybe, just a place to get my thoughts out. We don't have therapists in the ends obviously, so. Just in case there's some... somebody watching who doesn't understand what it means when you say the ends, what is yeah. it? Yeah, okay yeah, so <laughs> from my from my place in, in South London, which we consider the ends, uh, Generally low middle class, economic backgrounds, loads of flats, some houses on the edge of that. Um, a genuine feeling uh, judged by economics and uh, ethnic minorities, um, chicken shops, Caribbean stores, like just a vibe in it. It's hard to, it's a really good question because it's like, what is the end? Yeah. It's, a, it's a vibe which, and what contributes to that vibe are a number of things from the economics, the food stores, the people there, uh, just the whole village type feel, right. the community. Yeah. It's a certain community which we dub the ends. We consider the ends or whatever, or non-ends, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, well, we're well, not in the ends, of the, I don't think we're in the <laughs> no, ends at no. the moment. We're sitting outside Westfield here yeah. in uh, <laughs> West London. The end, and, uh, yeah. Well, not, not just because of the geographical location of here, but also the environment. It just doesn't breed the ends, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think it's an interesting question. I think we just dub certain area the ends, right. or in America the hood. Yeah. I think it's mainly first judged by the, you know, the economics of the area, yeah. the way the houses look, yeah. the, and then the type of people that are, you know, coming out of those areas. Yeah. And it will, and then people just dub it the hood because what is really the hood? Yeah. What is really the ends or favela or yeah. you know, it's really the spirit of the of the area. The community. Yeah. Yeah. And you've, um, uh, you're incredibly uh, articulate, uh, you're very well read, yeah. right? You, you take a pride in um, you know, that sort of continuous education. Tell me a little bit more about what's drawn you to books and what sort of books you like and how that's sort of featured in your journey. Yeah, I tried to, of course I'm trying to create a better life for myself, so I had to define what better was. And um, I don't come from a background of having exposure to a lot of money necessarily so I knew that that form of wealth may not have come in the early parts of my life so the only other wealth I could have was wealth of the mind. I needed some form of value if it wasn't going to be money then what else could I use in order to you know grow myself you know grow my value so I could have ultimately a better life and provide for you know you know my family my friends and just for myself so I looked at like uh, neurological linguistic programming um, 
and different things I could use to develop a different mindset in order to be able to attract uh, certain things into my life and books like The Alchemist, um, Rich Dad Poor Dad and uh, so many different, uh, The Secret, all these different books uh, sold an idea uh, that didn't require me to have money to have and lo and behold after studying you know uh, the books and studying Will Smith, studying Oprah Winfrey, studying Jay-Z, looking at the key factors of people that come from low middle class or lower economic backgrounds, what were the key things that you know helped them to elevate and outside of the you know the financial gain that they'd get at some point it was mainly the change of thinking so then I started to conclude that maybe wealth is really first existing in the mind in your thoughts in your habits your behaviors your attitudes your community like the way you maybe the real poverty is not where we're located but the way we think and the way we behave the food that we eat maybe that's really what's keeping people per se poor and if you'd raise the value of your mind maybe that help raise the value of your 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 product and your maybe you'd find it easier maybe our perceptions warped of reality because of the level of thought and hence why we're all struggling to find you know, opportunities and resources to grow. That's an incredibly inspiring way of, uh, of, of putting it, and I'm sure many would um, draw inspiration from that. Yeah. Uh, so where are you now on your on your journey of yeah, uh, well, of becoming? So I've uh, where am I now on my journey? It's a good question. I've released. Luckily, I've been able to release over you know 14 to 15 pieces of content on YouTube. You know, I've built a decent following on. Some of them are quite big, right? 30, 40,000 views? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's another thing, yeah. I, to be honest, like coming from the hip hop uh, background in the UK, I've always thought a million views or 500,000 views uh, was what was considered successful. But where I'm at now is looking at, you know, 40,000 people, 30,000 people, 20,000 views is enough. Uh, you don't need uh, millions of people uh, to be looking at your work to necessarily have a successful, you know, career. I did the basic massive. You have 20, so 20,000 people spend 20 pounds. It's 400,000 pounds. That's enough. So where I'm at now is I've got a good foundation. I've got good people supporting me. Um, uh, but most importantly, my attitude towards life has changed, and my my belief towards life has changed. How? Through just the realization of education, self-education and uh, really looking at things for what they are and this consciousness through some form of meditation and prayer and just coming to a point of awareness it's, it's really difficult to really really kind of acknowledge why certain people are in certain situations and ultimately ultimately it does come down to quality of thought which is controlled through different different means the content you, you choose to absorb in your mind yeah. the food the food that you eat obviously some communities it's more they can subconsciously uh, be at that level of thought you know if you grow up in a certain community they're not even going to be aware of what they're not even aware of yeah. they're unaware of how they could have been unaware you don't know what you don't know yeah basically yeah so yeah. some people are automatically put into a space where your worst level of thought would never be as bad as someone who's eating, you know, chicken and chips. I don't even eat chicken, you know, I'm vegetarian now, but eating chicken and chips every day, and that's no disrespect to people that do that. Eating chicken and chips and smoking and, you know, all the information we're getting is being fed to us via TV or radio. Yeah. No one's actually consciously seeking information for yourself, for that, for ourselves. So, yeah, quality, quality of thought has helped me to, um, even me acknowledging the, the idea of thought as a, as a thing, looking at, like, cognitive performance I went to like brain performance workshops and stuff like that while I was in the street I wow. used to go book go on event right and book incredible <laughs> brain I'd be the only black guy there <laughs> it's like all middle class white guys there <laughs> black guy in a tracksuit literally there in the uh, in these uh, workshops and I'm just there just listening to because I, I knew that my mind was the only thing I could have so I learned about conscious and subconscious mindset and 21 days to build a habit and different ways you could do this neuro neurological linguistic programming or affirmations different things to work the mind to sort of brainwash or I, say, I use the word brainwash it's not the correct term but 
at the time it was to brainwash my mind until it got to the point where all I believed in was believing in my success. So I couldn't think any different. Thinking yourself to a better place. Yeah, so I, I, didn't, want to, I didn't want to have the idea of uh, not succeeding. I didn't want it to be physically possible for me to even have the idea. Yeah. So like in you know those movies where there's that young kid that's breeded for war since he's nine and he's part of this Shaolin monk camp and all he knows is war because that's what he's been breeded towards. I kind of took on that psychology where I was right. like, there's so much trauma and so much backward steps. I'm gonna have to build myself almost like a machine yeah. that only thinks towards growing. So if you're a um, if you're a young aspiring rap artist in urban London or ur urban UK, uh, how do you think about launching yourself and how do you think about your craft? What what sort of advice would you give to others who may be in that place? That's a really good question. Um, I think. First, launching your se first self, understanding self. Um, that's the first thing. That's as simple as a Google search on how, who am I? And finding books and references to who you are, because everything's, the seed is you, so without a you know, sense of self, then it's gonna be challenging to really uh, launch yourself into anything until you know what you're trying to, what the where's the rocket going? Where are you going? Like who am I? Who am I? Yeah, who am I? That's the first. That's the first pilgrimage, and then uh, then it just becomes about um, finding people. Hopefully, once you know who you are, uh, hopefully the universe in some way will come to your aid to support your your vision and bringing it together. I mean, it does fundamentally come down to going to the studio and recording records and creatively putting your soul and your mind and <laughs> Clarice <laughs> on the, in your music and stuff. But it, it, uh, those are the basic things, I think. Creating music, you can Google search, going to the studio, Google search, where can I record? Or go to your local college or university, wherever, finding a studio space. There are many producers online. I think anyone that wants to become a rapper or singer would know that there's producers on Instagram. You know, you can source the raw skill that you need uh, skill sets you need quite easily through social media uh, but in regards to patch packing it all together and what you're actually saying and the sounds and stuff that's all self that's all learning of self it starts with identity uh, yeah the, the practical sense of creating now more than ever in this in this in the world we live in now it's uh it's quite simple yeah for for all of us there's beats on youtube there's so many creators that want to find people to house their their creativity there's so much like social uh, musical real estate around the world online it's so easy to source the rawness of it what's the hard part is adding a sense of self and individuality to it and then being able to um, get it out to the world and market it and distribute it so but before that i would definitely say having a sense of self i'm sure anyone watching this would be would know how to source the, the raw materials the videographers right. the producers that's instagram that's facebook that's twitter that's google I'm, that's your friend down the road. I used to record in Sebastian's house in, in Tulse Hill, Colombian guy. His mum used to come in every like 20 minutes, speak in Spanish, F up our recordings. <laughs> like, <laughs> some of my recordings now probably have like background vocals of like a Spanish, Spanish woman, but it was hard. It was really hard knocks, like literally just finding anywhere and linking to anyone that had any connection to music. But if you come from South London, or an urban park or the ends of London, there's always uh, someone who knows a rapper or a producer. Right, right. It, it's, it's, it's the essence of our existence. It's like if you're in Texas, then I'm sure there's someone that has a, has a horse. <laughs> so find yourself, uh, find your Sebastian or your Clarice, um, yeah, 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 uh, your, your inspiration. Yeah. Um, you've got an, uh, obviously an amazingly uh, unique uh, sound, rock rap sounds uh, extremely intriguing. Mm. What's next for Quasi Court? What should we expect? Uh, so, what's next? That's a good question as well. It's really good questions <laughs> leading to me to what's next. Okay, so what's next is um, I'm working on this uh, an EP, an extended playlist. Uh, Bad Boys Don't Listen is the name I'm, I'm considering at the moment, which is more an ethos, a philosophy because um, growing up there's been so many different ideas I could adopt 
and eventually I concluded that the only idea I should adopt is the idea of self. Uh, given, obviously, taken into consideration society and the sounds that I like, but ultimately everything has to centre itself. So working on an EP um, attached to a narrative, attached to uh, visuals, a whole creative uh, birth child, a whole creative product, narrative, music and sound. As an artist now it's beyond uh, sonical, it's more uh, overall, it's design, it's sound, it's aesthetic. Uh, being a musician is about making music um, and composing music, but being an artist is about you know, stimulating people sonically, visually, the essence of your being, your words. Being an artist, artist is provoking thought using the arts to manipulate what you're trying to communicate. So we use the arts, whether it's visual or sound, you know, so that's what's next is a whole campaign with a philosophy which is matched by all these different installations, whether it's sound, visual, lighting, um, even from the back end, you know, everything I'm creating now, it's more a, a narrative, a feeling that's the most real to my life at the moment and the stage that I'm at, which kind of dubs and tells a story of you know, trap house to rock band, um, but not done in a, in a, not just with words, but with what you can see, hear, feel, you know, visualise with fashion films, photography, so it's, it's, a, it's a whole campaign. Amazing. You have a, a wonderful way of putting things, I have to say. I just, <laughs> uh, I just let it wash over me like nectar. Yeah. Um, yeah. Incredibly inspiring. Uh, closing thoughts, any advice to young people who may be growing up in, uh, in, in the ends, uh, different parts of urban, yeah. urban London or elsewhere? Yeah, I would definitely say the ends that you have is really the the mental space you create for yourself. Like, none of us are defined by where we're from geographically in the world. It's more so we're defined by the thoughts that we obtain, um, the beliefs that we have, our actions, our behaviors, our values. So though the environment may breed a certain level of behavior, the real ends exist in your mind, the real ends exist in your heart, the real, wherever you are in the world and I know Jay-Z has this really good lyric saying put me anywhere on God's green green earth I'll triple my worth saying it doesn't matter where you put me I was always gonna you know make it out so I'll definitely say working on the mind since your environment if you're from the ends you are coming from a hard lifestyle there's nothing I can do to, to, to advise you on that apart from just avoid getting involved in things that won't help you progress but the only thing that I feel that will help you progress is developing a mindset uh, through literature. Uh, if you don't like to read, you can listen to stuff on YouTube. There's a Google podcast. There's many different things. So I'd definitely say um, first start with developing your mind, acknowledging where your mind's at, acknowledging what you, where your mind needs to be, um, and working on your mind, not just in terms of what you input in your mind, but your diet, all these different things. So my, my, my information is more just about, or my advice is more human advice for human beings to develop, they first have to develop themselves at the core. Everything starts to see of who you are, so I think the basics first, who you are, what you believe in, what your values are, where your mind's at, and once that's developed, it makes you know one move uh, much more easier. You can achieve 10 moves in one move because of the level of thought, as opposed to struggling through a, you know, a really restricted mindset to achieve something. As your mind, as the value of your mind and understanding and resources increase, what takes you a minute to do may take someone 25. This level of thought, I've learned that that metric. So, well, it's amazing, amazing advice for anyone actually. Uh, yeah, yeah, no yeah, matter where the they're from. Uh, yeah, wherever where are you from? But in the end, specifically, yeah. it's definitely mental environment. Yeah. If your physical environment is is not the best, then that gives you more of an inspiration more of a motivation to enhance the mental one. If your physical environment, you know, isn't that bad, then you're probably gonna, you're not gonna need those level of mental extremities. You're not gonna have to, maybe, I don't know, I'm not from there, but you're maybe not gonna have to think on that level. You can think practically, this is what I'm trying to do, and I've got the resources, so I can just sort of walk towards what I'm doing, obviously a bit of hard work in terms of hours or whatever, but you're not going to have to deal with the extremity of avoiding uh, certain drugs or violence, you know. Given the circumstance, the harsher the circumstances, the higher the level of thought yeah. has to be. That's why you can, I can see, 
why certain individuals come from the harshest situations, but not only come to a point of stability, but rise even beyond that. Because that for them to- strength of character. Yeah, because yeah. what they had to develop yeah. to get out of there meant that they could go all the way to a billion. Amazing. What, yeah. a, what an amazing uh, uh, point to, to end on. Um, I'm gonna put the links to uh, Quasi's YouTube channel and Insta feed uh, below. Uh, check him out, expect big th things from this guy. He's uh, an inspiration. Quasi, thanks very much. Thank you, man.